So you want to fly the Anvil F7S Ghost or the F7R Tracker? Well, I got a good one in store for you. Sit down, strap up, and let's go. The F7CS Hornet Ghost For those that don't want to be found, the F7CS Ghost is built on the versatile Hornet platform to reduce visibility to all forms of imaging. Through a combination of low emission drives, low draw weapons, and void armor technology capable of diffusing scans, the F7CS Ghost is built for the pilot who wants to keep a low profile. The Ghost is capable of slipping past the most ardent of observers to accomplish whatever goal you need to accomplish. Don't worry, we won't ask. Hey everyone, this is Fist25 coming at you live from the Stanton system. And today we're going to go over the F7CS Hornet Ghost as part of our wrap up of the Hornet series. We're also going to go over the tracker today as well, but right here in the Lorville hangar, we have the ghost with us. So let's take a quick walk around and then we will hop in that cockpit and take off and get into space. As you can see, the ghost is uh, painted black, which for me, that's phenomenal. I love uh, the way this aircraft looks. It is intimidating. It's imposing. I got a couple of Trisha repeaters on the wings and a 220 on the nose. It still has that classic Hornet shape of the regular F7C, except this one is our stealth fighter. So instead of a gun on the top, where a top turret would be, we have basically a stealth module. And that takes the, the place of that. That's the drawback from... Uh, Having a stealth aircraft is you have to give up something to gain something, and what we give up is that that big slot on the top. But let's go ahead and hop in the cockpit, and uh, away we go. As we get into the cockpit, it is pretty standard here. We got the same multifunction displays. I have my head tracking turned on, so if it looks a little bit weird, that's why. Go ahead and start the aircraft. Advent Aerospace. All systems online. All right. We're going to request takeoff. Okay. So as always, I tend to launch with the drone camera view in third person. As I just like to see these aircraft take off. We're going to take off with a little bit of upward thrust from our thrusters, retract our landing gear, forward and back seem to be fine. And we want to take off into Lorville at night. We do have to find the rings to take off as this is patch 3.11. Let's head out. Thank you. <laughs> so I believe it was PAX 3.10 that actually gave the Hornet Ghost uh, some more stealth capability. And we're going to explore that to see if it actually works. All right, as we head out of the atmosphere here, uh, getting to quantum range, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our systems here. Uh, specifically the heat system here. You, you know this is the heat system because it has the suppress overall IR here. And we can see our heat signature here, our EM signature, and our IR signature. I'm going to go ahead and press this suppress IR, overall IR, and we'll watch our signatures drop. Mostly the IR. Let's turn it back off. Our IR went from 5530-ish down about a thousand. Let's see, our heat and our EM stayed the same. While this is going on, I'm going to go ahead and turn off weapons. weapons on. Okay, and let's go down. And we can see that our EM signature is rapidly dropping. 
and this is about where we're going to be at for right now. Um, I could turn the shields off. Let's see what happens with that. Okay, you see our EM signature is dropping rapidly as well. Now, with the shields and with the weapons, the weapons are very easy to turn on and charge up. Uh, I do have two, I do have two Mirage shields on here, and those charge up very fast as well. But I'm also very vulnerable without any shields at all. We're gonna go ahead and pull up a contract here, and we'll see. How far out we can go before they even detect us the goal is to get a lock on and shoot a couple missiles first before they even find us and as soon as I shoot those missiles I'm gonna start charging my shields and we'll see if that actually works uh, to where we have the drop on them and then we can take them out okay so we're in a debris field here Asteroids and debris. Looks like our bounty is up here. See how he's not moving at all? That means he can't see me. Which is a good thing. So let's target him and see what happens with the target. So now he's radar locked. But still, nothing's happening. So I'm going to turn on the weapons. Actually, I'm, I'm above the range for the size 2, so I'm going to move forward a little bit until I hit range. Then I'm going to turn on the weapons. He can probably see me at this point. And yeah, his friend sees me. I'm going to turn everything on, and we're going to fire. And we took some hits. Will it be worth it? Let's find out. He's in a cutty black, and he's not happy. Okay, one down. Let's see how this guy does. Let's uh, see if we can get at, get some missiles on him real quick here. Couple size ones. Alright, at least sopping up those shields a little bit. Alright, we're going to keep shooting him. We're going to strafe in the direction he goes. Wasn't fast enough. Let those attrition cool down. They're actually are supposed to hit harder as they speed up, but Seems like it's taking a little bit longer to kill this Cuddy Black. Oh, I'm taking some, I'm taking him out almost. I see his shields are pretty much down. There he goes. So we can attest that the stealth did work. Um, as I got close enough to lock on those size 2 missiles, though, he did see me. So maybe it's worth exploring, changing those weapon racks out for size 3s and then reducing our missile load, but at least we can get a missile off and then charge up our shields and, you know, plow through these guys. So next we're going to take a look at the ghost in third-person view. Again, it's, it's such a beautiful ship being in the Hornet series. We can see that uh, in space it's not as black as one would think. But it is dark in color, so it should make it you know, blend in, I guess, with the stars better. We can see those attrition 3s on the wings and the Mantis GT220 on the nose. Other than that, it's a standard Hornet aircraft, the same tail spoiler section, same engine, uh, just sacrificed in that top turret and top weapon for the stealth package. I'm going to give you a look on the bottom. Looks pretty much the same as any other Hornet, big exhaust, big engine, 
Uh, we do have our lights working. And back on top. So with that, we're now going to take a look at how the stealth actually works. Uh, I'm going to have my friend Java Sparky out there in a different aircraft, and he's going to track us. And then we're just basically going to back up until he can't see us anymore. And then we will go over some of the, you know, turning on weapons, turning on shields, and see kind of when we disappear and what the effective range is with my current build. Okay, I'm sitting here with Java Sparky out in the near Crusader, and we're gonna test the stealth capability of the Hornet Ghost. I am using an opponent Hornet Ghost as well, so pretty even as far as tracking goes. Uh, Jawa has turned on his stealth systems, but he still has shields and weapons activated. So Jawa, why don't you start heading backwards and we'll see how long it takes. Slow, slow down a little bit. We'll see how long it takes before you disappear. Keep going. Okay, I have you targeted. 600 meters. 700 meters. 800 meters. Nine, almost to a thousand. There's, there's a thousand. So there's a kilometer. Keep going. One point three. Yep. Keep going. One point four. One point five. Six. 1.7, 1 1.8, 1 1.9, 2 kilometers, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, 2, 7, 2, 8. Keep going, Jala. Get you to 3. Okay, stop. You have, uh, at 3,000 meters, you are no longer on my system. I'm not, I, I see your party marker, but I'm not able to target you. So uh, with that, come on into view. Come up to about 1,000 meters from me. You, d you definitely came in view when you crossed the 3,000 threshold. Okay, stop right there. Okay, turn off your weapon system, please. Weapons off. Okay, let's see how far back uh, before I can detect you now. Go ahead and back up. Two, 1,300, 17, 18, 19, there's 19, two, there's 2,000, I can still see you and target you, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, oh, I lost you, so right at around 2,900 meters. So that's only 100 meters for the weapons. So come back in to about 2,000, Jawa. Okay, right there. Mm -hmm. And go ahead, you know how to turn off your shields? Uh, Yes. Okay, go ahead and turn off your shields. Okay, shields offline. Okay, I can still see your marker, so go ahead and start backing up. 21, 22, 24, 25. Yep, yeah, I can still see you. 27, 28, 12, just lost you. So about 28.50 or so. So when you when you think about it, you when you have full stealth on, uh, with, with weapons on and shields on, we're only talking about 150 meters or so 
uh, to where they can see you. Now you can tweak some of your settings, I'm sure, in there to make yourself more stealthy. You can start turning off individual components that put out heat and EM signature. Uh, but if you're really kind of trying to engage in some kind of combat, you're looking roughly at about 2,800 uh, with nothing on, 3,000 with everything on. Most of the time when you come out of a into a bounty hunter mission, you're in between uh, 3,000 to uh, 4,000, 5,000 away. So you usually, you know, when you quantum in there, you'll have a small window there where you can immediately uh, lock up your target with at least two missile locks and fire your missiles. So we're going to go ahead and give that a shot and we'll see you on the other side when we're you know, through quantum and in combat. Sometimes in this game, bugs happen. It is an alpha, and Jawa encountered an error in his ghost, and he was ejected from his seat without actually ejecting, and he could not get back into his aircraft. So we're going to do a quick cut um, over to myself in third person, just showing you that I can sneak up on this target and fire a couple missiles and then engage. The F7CR Hornet Tracker. If the ghost is made to hide, the tracker is made to seek. The F7CR Tracker boasts an advanced radar suite, making it ideal for deep space explorers who require depth and accuracy in their scan packages. Local militia and larger Merc units will also find the tracker ideal for use as a mobile command and control ship for organizing their squadrons. With durable Hornet fuselage and the best scanning technology available, the tracker doesn't break away. It leads the pack. So here we have the Hornet tracker. And as we can see, it has a bluish color scheme to it. 
Uh, on the top, it has the Wills Op Long Look Radar, uh, which also extends to the bottom of the aircraft. And that is the trade off in this Hornet for having basically a longer scan range. Um, that kind of gameplay really isn't in the game at the moment. It is still a Hornet, it still has all the capabilities of a Hornet, it just lacks that top turret, and the trade off is the longer radar. It comes from a long line of AWACS type aircraft with. You know, they have command and control of the battlefield. They usually fly at a higher altitude. They're able to track multiple targets and kind of organize the, the fight. Not sure how you do that with a single pilot. Uh, usually, a, a real world aircraft like an E2C Hawkeye would have a whole crew of people in there in the aircraft trying to, you know, provide command and control to the battlefield uh, in addition to its longer radar. So we'll see how that works when that gameplay and that, that component is actually online. So you can see from the bottom here, let me flip the aircraft over. You can see on the bottom is the other piece of the Wills Op Long Look Radar. It's attached there at the bottom. Um, I think it'll be a really neat feature when it's finally online. And uh, we'll see what happens. This so, look. Without any further ado, let's... Find a couple missions and let's go dogfighting. In the F7 CR Tracker. Looks like they saw us, so that didn't work. Shields already down. Gotta grab the steps. They hit me pretty hard there. I'm gonna desync. One down. Move on to the next guy. Don't know what that explosion was. Oh. Hard to hit these guys that are just spinning. You can hear those shredders. Take him out. Oh. Well, apparently I got him. There's a little bit of desync in there. Try these missiles. Alright, fire the missiles. Alright, took that guy out. Try these missiles here. And we're dry. Alright, took him out too. That got a little close to see how bad our ship got damaged. Oh, we lost our tail spoiler. And other than that, we seem to be pretty intact. So this is going to fly really weird. So I'm going to head off and repair.
Okay, so here we are at the Urkel.Games website with the Hornet Ghost. And uh, this is the stock loadout here. Uh, as you can see, the ball turret, it would let us put something in there, but we already know that we can't. Um, so on the wings are two Omiski 9s. I don't like those at all those are cannons so on the nose i'm gonna go ahead and stick a laser repeater let's go ahead and do some attritions uh, on the nose we'll put some ballistics on the side the reason we're gonna do this is because one i always want to have a laser just in case i run out of ammo two the ballistics actually have less of a signature than the lasers so it makes you even harder to detect now with your weapons turned off it really doesn't matter uh, but if you're trying to go out there with your weapons turned on it might just matter uh, as far as the missiles go I again if your weapons are turned off it shouldn't matter but I tend to uh, gravitate to the cross sections strike force and sparks spark is the only size one cross section for shields i'm going all stealth uh, grade a uh this is the mirage they recharge the fastest they have the most hit points as you can see uh then the the stock i believe shimmers that were on there uh so double mirages power plant we're going to go with the slipstream the most power on a class a stealth drive for the coolers, we're also going to go stealth with the snow blinds. Um, again, not nearly as good as an ultra flow at 440, but uh, they are stealth. And they do work with this loadout. And with the quantum drive, we're going to go with the Spectre, which means you're going to have to stop for gas, even to go from Hurston to Port Alisar. You're going to have to stop at a rest stop and, and get some gas. But it does provide you with, with pretty good stealth here. Um, you can go over here to this side of the website and turn off everything, right? Turn off your turrets, maneuvering, shields charging, weapons firing, and mining. And you can get an idea of what your EM signature would be basically with everything turned off. And uh, you can also see our DPS. There's just so many statistics out here on the website that would help us. Um, but we would probably be maneuvering, which means our engines and coolers would be on. So this is, I don't know how accurate this is, but this is what Urkel is giving us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn all the rest of these back on for the next part of the show here. But uh, we're going to put all these parts into our cart. And then we're going to go to our cart. Um, as you can see, to make this thing in the loadout I have, which is all stealth, and then a couple Gatlings and a laser repeater, you're looking at about 176, 177,000 Alpine UEC, which isn't that bad. Uh, you can make that easily over a couple of days of trading or, you know, five or six box missions, wh whatever you do to get money. Uh, but these also are the best components, uh, in my opinion. So, take it as you will. That's how much it costs to do that. Go ahead and empty out our cart. We're going to go ahead and move on to the tracker. So, we're going to Anvil. We're going to go to our Hornet tracker. So, here you see we have our uh, Hornet tracker up here. And we see the stock loadout here. Uh, mostly grade C components. Um, there's one competition power plant, uh, two laser repeaters. We're gonna go ahead and take the gimbals off these repeaters, make them fixed weapons on the nose. We're gonna put our laser repeater of the Attrition 3, and on the wings, we're gonna do a ballistic repeater and not a Gatling, but a repeater of the Shredder. Uh, the Shredder actually has really good uh, DPS. It's a 448 DPS. Um, it is less than the Mantis GT220. Um, However, the Mantis and the Shredder do have some, some subtle differences here. The, the Shredder here, you can see it does 112 alpha damage and its fire rate is 240. Whereas GT220 does 29 
alpha damage, but it has a much higher fire rate of 1,000 RPM. So that's really where that DPS number comes in. But that also means you have to get more shots on target. If you're already good at getting shots on target, then maybe going with something like a Tiger Strike or a, a Shredder would be a better option because you do have more uh, alpha damage with your shots. Uh, the ammo count on the Shredder is 480. On the GT220, it's 4,000. Of course, you're firing a lot more, more sustained fire. Um, it, I would say the, the 220 is probably the better choice, but while they're still balancing things, well, might as well test out the Shredder. Uh, we got some size 2 and size 1 missiles. Uh, you probably just keep them stock, uh, but you know, if you want to go up to cross sections, then feel free to go to cross sections. Uh, for shields, I believe on my tracker, since I really in the long run the tracker is going to be an AWACS, it's not going to be a heavy combat vehicle, so uh, reducing the power load on it is good, but still keeping it as military as you can. Two FR 66s, as far as shields go, they do have a good uh, bank of shields, they recharge really fast, and I, I really haven't had any problems with that. Uh, for the power plant, you got to get rid of the competition power plant. Uh, it, it just it's not going to perform either go with a JS 300 or a quarter cell uh, as you can see our power is now back in the black uh, the coolers again ultra flows are the standard here uh, there's no reason to deviate from that and the quantum drive since we're not worried about being stealthy is going to be an atlas so this is our standard build here for the Hornet tracker if we put the items in the cart and then head to our cart uh, we can see that cost about 173,000 even Alpha UEC, and so that is the tracker build. So that wraps up our review of the F7 CS Ghost and the F7 CR Tracker, two Hornet variants in the F7C lineup. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute. I'm pretty sure we forgot an aircraft. Yep. I'm pretty sure that we forgot to mention the wildfire, which I'm going to bring to you now. The Anvil F7C wildfire. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the last of the Hornet series, the wildfire. It is basically just a color variant of the F7C Hornet. It does come with a different uh, default stock loadout than the regular Hornet. Uh, but as you can see, I have already changed that. Um, I, this is what I call my attrition build. Um, I have a size four attrition cannon on top, a size three on the nose, and then I have two Tiger Strike ballistic repeaters on the wings. And as you can see, I have a, so two size three missiles and two size two missiles on here as well just to pack a little more punch so as we fly towards Everest Harbor we'll take a look and we'll see that my ladder is down uh, of course this is patch 311 so that stuff happens sometimes uh, hopefully that canopy issue is fixed in 312 as you can see a beautiful aircraft the red accents it's called the wildfire and in past games from Chris Roberts, we have seen these type of variants on aircrafts and different loadouts like Wild Weasel loadout on Wing Commander and other games. And this game is no different. Okay, and, and we're getting scanned. So let's go ahead and slow down and let him scan us real quick. A few moments later. So here we have the F7C Hornet Wildfire at Urkel.Games. I figured we'd take a look at this while we're in Quantum, just to give you an idea of what we have here. Uh, stock loadout, we got a couple Tarantula Ballistic Cannons, and then the Revenant Ballistic Gatling, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. You have cannons out there that, that actually do quite high alpha damage, and then you have a, a Gatling, which is a huge fire rate. You could just assign them to different mouse buttons or joystick uh, buttons and fire them independently, but that's not the way I like to fly. 
so I don't do that. Um, it comes with some uh, stock EM size 2 and size 1 missiles, and then a bunch of grade C components in the quantum drive, the coolers, and the shields. Uh, it comes with a grade D power plant, the Roughneck, which is adequate for the loadout it has right now being all ballistic. Uh, but, you know, I would highly recommend upgrading this. Uh, if you're going to keep the Revenant build, I would change your nose gun out to an Attrition 3 and change the wings out to a shredder or a gt220 so we'll go ahead with the gt220 and that gives you a lot of ballistic firepower but again this is just like my uh, original hornet build so let's let's go a little bit different here on the ball turret let's actually go for an attrition 4 as a laser repeater it has the same dps uh actually i think the the revenant is 672 the attrition 4 is 925 that's really only when it's up to temperature, but it, it is a powerful weapon and it's a laser. So you'll always have that weapon as long as you have power. And then let's change out the wings to have tiger strikes. Why not? Uh, it's a little bit less DPS than the Mantis. However, uh, the Mantis is a thousand RPM fire rate. The tiger strikes even faster at 1075. Um, doing just a little bit less alpha damage. So let's go with target strikes. Why not? We're testing the game. And then on the front, the, the nose repeater would be an attrition 3. Uh, you can keep the stock missile loadout, but since this is a wildfire, let's go for full wild weasel here. Let's put in size 3 missile launchers. And for those, of course, cross section arrestor 3s. And we will change out our other missiles to cross section. Um, for the shields, uh, typically I run two Palisades on this because it's 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 not something I'm going to be in sustained dogfights for. Um, the wildfire for me, it's just come in, just completely unleash damage, absorb as many hits as you can while you're doing it, and then bug out and either rearm or continue on, but... I don't make this aircraft the way I build it to sustain real long in fights. It's it's not something that's going to run. It's, it's something that's going to attack. Uh, for a power plant, military JS-300. For coolers, our standard Ultra Flows. And for the Quantum Drive, go ahead and go with the Atlas, which is standard. Now, we put all these stock items into the cart. We pull up our cart here. Uh, this is about 203, almost 204,000 Alpha UEC, and that's due mostly to the attritions and the Tiger Strikes being put on here. Uh, remember, you can only buy attrition weapons at Planet Hurston in Lorville at the uh, Central Business District uh, as you head in there. Just like when you go to trade there, on the left side is the trading side, on the right side is the weapon side. You can buy attritions in there. All the way up to size six and you can also buy uh the laser scatter guns which i believe are called dominance up to size three and that'll let you do a scatter gun build if you want to try to do that and so that concludes our urkel dot games version uh of this video and we're now going to transition over to the last two pages of the hornet brochure and just go over the ghost and go over the tracker. Unfortunately, there isn't anything about the wildfire. But we'll get that done and then we'll go look at some third person chase camera dogfighting and wrap up. Thanks, everybody. So, this is the brochure page for the F7CS Hornet Ghost. As you can see, some very nice pictures of the ghost. Great profile here. Uh, it has. Again, outdated weapons and shields that are installed on there. And there's not much other information. It is a stealth Hornet. And this is what you get. The dimensions are the same as the Hornet. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the tracker. The tracker here is, again, the same dimensions as the Hornet. It, it does go a little bit lower with the, the Willops radar package uh, than normal, but it doesn't go below the landing gear, so it's not really anything to worry about or getting hung up or snagged on anything. Um, it, it says it has different engines than the 
Ghost and the other Hornet, but that stuff it may be out of date. I'm not sure. They haven't updated the brochure, but we they being CIG. But we can see uh, the loadout is not what we get stock, but that that's okay because we know what the capabilities of this aircraft are and what it's going to do. And going back to the Ghost, we don't see this antenna on the starboard forward fuselage like we do on the tracker it makes me curious to see it's not on the hornet either and it's not on the super hornet so i think this it's not it's probably not an airspeed tube or p dot tube it's more than likely something specific to the tracker to help it track maybe it's a forward sensor of some kind uh, but that's a nice little touch and i hope it doesn't break off too easy Okay, here we are. Of course, as soon as we got here, my canopy opened, so I had to take care of that. But, let's see how this thing performs with the attrition form out of the top. This is a CS4 mission. Heavy laser instead of a heavy ballistic. And, woo, just as fast as the Revenant up top. This build, I actually have two Palisade shields. I just kind of went crazy with this build, and boom. As you can see, they are actually hitting me and getting through some of my shields here. Now that two of their friends are down, you know, who knows? I don't think I actually got that missile out. Maybe I did. Not sure it's gonna matter. Boom! Splash three. Let's get this guy. Mustang Delta. Eating up that attrition four up top. Big damage. Big damage. Okay, another Cutlass Black. Boom! He didn't make much of a fight as he didn't move around a lot, but uh, you can see how fast those Tiger Strikes and those Attritions penetrate shields and just go in. The Tiger Strike actually has a faster firing rate than the 220. So let's go ahead and find another mission and uh, see where we go from here. Do another CS4. Right. Oh. oh, are we in the area already? We might be. That happened quick. Yep. Not even time to arm the missiles. So Buccaneers are main target here. Woo, he went up quick. Another Buccaneer. Keep an eye on his shield, see how fast they go down. Take a turn, buddy. Booyah! Get some missiles on you, buddy. Mustang Delta. Boom, he went quick too. This has helped, I'm sure. I'm 
Not sure why the pirates would want a Mustang Delta out there helping them. Oh, I thought I had him right before he made the turn. Or the joust, I should say. Woo! Was I missing him? What was happening? This guy should be vapor. There we go. Alright, Drake Buccaneer. You can't really joust me, buddy. Sorry. All right. So, as we can see, the Hornet Wildfire is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Hey, everybody. So, I have uh, got a fellow friend and pilot here with me today by the name of Gonzo. And he is a specialist on all models of the Hornet. And he politely accepted my request for an interview today. And we're going to talk about a little bit about him and, and his opinions on the Hornet series of aircraft, their strengths, their weaknesses, and in general, everything about them that he can think of. So without further ado, let me introduce... Gonzo. Hello, Fist. Hey, how's it going today? Well, pretty good. We had a rather productive practice. That was always a good thing. Yeah, yeah, it was good. So we're sitting outside of uh, beautiful Hurston L3. Uh, we can just outside the station here. Uh, we picked you up in the 890 jump, and uh, we're just going to do a little interview here and talk about some of your background. When did you, you know, tell me a little about your history. When did you decide you want to be a pilot? Um, what's your favorite aircraft to fly? Give me some background on you. Well, uh, it's 2930 would have been when I got my first pilot's license. I started doing this. Stanton system stuff back in 2942. Gotta okay. say, I don't have a favorite ship, but I do spend a lot of time flying Hornets, specifically the Super Hornet. Okay, so what is your, I guess, uh, out of the Hornet series, what is your favorite out of all of them from the from the F7C Hornet to the Super Hornet to the Wildfire, the Tracker, the Ghost, uh, everything. What is your favorite one to fly? Oh, well, it'd have to be the Super Hornet, the F7C M. Uh, without a doubt and without argument, and I will challenge anybody to this, it is the best chase plane we have here in Stanton, probably in the entire UEE. Okay, but from from like a fighter's pilot perspective, would you prefer the Super Hornet over the standard Hornet? Or would you even consider the Ghost to be a better aircraft because of the stealth? Depends on how you're going to use it. So if you were going to, say, use the Ghost, you'd be using it more in a first strike capacity. Um, you wouldn't want to try to so much dogfight with it as you would want to either use it to reconnoiter something, get in close, hit somebody with a really hard alpha strike volley or something like that. You, simple fact is stealth armor has got less hit points, less resiliency than most of the other armors out there. So you wouldn't want to actually hold it in a protracted dogfight. Okay, so have you tried some of the stealth gameplay with the ghost and have you how has that worked out for you it's worked out pretty good actually um i put uh scatter guns on a ghost got up nice and close to my target and just unloaded three shots into him and he went up like a like a tinderbox okay so you're a fan of the scatter gun loadout um 
Is there any other loadout you would recommend for the Hornet series? Well, the thing about the Hornet series is that it's a very versatile frame, and that's how it's always been marketed and advertised. And so as time goes on, as weapons evolve, you always have to be ready to adapt. Like right now, I wouldn't use the scatter guns um, just because their effective fire range is nowhere near what's published. Uh, I wouldn't use them if I couldn't get close to a target unless it was like within 150 meters. Okay, but some people say the Attrition series or the Revenant series has is the preferred loadout for uh, the Hornet, the Super Hornet, especially on that top turret as a size 4 weapon. Would you still go with the Scattergun loadout over those? No, I'd go with the Attrition. Like Right now, the Attrition's, the Revenant setups, those are the most prevalent because they are the most effective as things are right now but if you were to go five years ago no you would have gone with uh, all mass driver builds or all CF 337s or well no you'd go with the top turret being two three two 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 sevens and then the rest would be 337s um, like I said it's as technology as guns as weaponry evolves you need to evolve with it Okay, and do you prefer uh, for the top turret having the two guns set up or, or the bigger one gun set up? Depends on what I'm going to put up there. If I'm going to put a distortion weapon up there, I would rather have the two smaller guns because the only size four distortion weapon is a scatter gun. Um, but if I was going to go with a direct fire weapon, then I'd probably go with the attrition right now. Okay. Okay. And tell me a little bit about your uh, your history with uh, Renegade Squatter. Um, well, I was uh, approached by Templar One, who at the time was the leader of Renegade Squadron, and asked if I wanted to fool around with them for a bit. I humbly accepted because those guys, especially Jack Cassidy, Repeatedly, frequently, utterly kick my ass. Okay. Uh, I learned a few things from them. And uh, then I sat down with Templar One uh, as we discussed what the rules for joining were. And they said it was an all or nothing deal. It was either you were renegade, you were renegade, or you weren't. You couldn't be an affiliate. Um, From an experience with another org back in 29, oh, it would have been 2940. Uh, I just I have no desire to be part of an actual org anymore. I'd rather just be an affiliate with other with other orgs. Um, I just don't want to have somebody telling me what I can and cannot say, what I can and cannot do, who I can approve or appreciate and who I cannot approve or appreciate. Okay. Well, I can certainly appreciate that and having that solo and independent streak. Oh, thanks. Uh, I mean, it's not like I'm actually solo solo. I mean, I'm still friends with a lot of guys from that original org. Um, they've spread out all over the place. Uh, one guy's in the one-tenth. Another one's affiliated with the Brown Coats. A um, couple guys are with the Blackstone Knights. So you know we're we're all over the place. We're still pretty friendly with each other. I see. I mean, definitely. That's that's my apologies. That's what I meant to imply. I mean, you still have friends and allies out there. Um, so let me ask you, what's your what do you do with your pilot skills um, here in the specifically the Stanton system? Are you mostly bounty hunter or are you trying to do you do missions for the Navy or are you doing things for the different corporations? What's your primary method of earning money? Well, actually, I work for the movies. I predominantly fly as a chase plane pilot. Uh, working for various camera crews as they record footage for various productions in the Stanson system. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, 
What is your uh, company called? Uh, Gongjai Productions. Uh, that's actually my my last call sign when I left the UE Navy. Uh, unfortunately, because it is Cantonese in pronunciation, there's a bit of a dispute on how to spell it. So, you know, most of the time people just go with Gongzo because there's no disputing on how to spell that. Right. Outstanding. Have you been to Seoul and, and to Shanghai? Yes, as a matter of fact. Okay. I mean, were you born there or were you born... Where, oh, where no, were you born oh, no. here? Uh, I, I was born in a uh, prairie town, just uh, Western Canada, or what was once upon a time called Canada. Okay. Prairie town. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, we had uh, cows, we had uh, hay, we had disorganized crime. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm sidetracking you here. Sorry. Let me, uh, let's get back on topic. So, so out of all the Hornets, you definitely prefer the Super Hornet over any of the other ones, correct? That would be correct. Okay. And your, your standard loadout that you would recommend would be a uh, scattergun loadout? Mm, well, right now what I'm using is one um, distortion repeater on the nose two attrition threes on the wings and then the, a attrition four on the top turret there. Okay. And that, that seems to be the, the build you like most right now. Yeah. In terms of keeping close to a target, I find 300 meters is very, very doable. Inside 150 meters where it is optimal for a scatter gun is actually really, really difficult. Okay. Interesting. Um, so yeah, that's that's the setup that I'm currently using. But who knows? As as technology evolves, we might see me change into something else. Um, for a very 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 long time, I was one of the biggest supporters of mass drivers. Okay. So, out of all the ships that have you know that exist right now. And, and some of the ships that you've heard about in the future, doesn't matter what size, what is exciting you the most? What are you most looking forward to getting behind and flying and trying out? I have to confess, I'm looking forward to trying out the Ares. Um, Same here. I am of the opinion that if you cannot mitigate your damage with uh, maneuvering, which as things are in Stanton right now, I have a problem with. Um, you have to go for that hard, firm, big alpha hit. So with the nice size sevens on the Ares, can possibly get that first strike capability, can possibly punch through things, can possibly hurt your target, especially if you do things correctly. You set every avenue of engagement in your favor, which is, largely how I was taught to fly. Um, a lot of the stuff that I was taught in flight school was Oswald Bullock's dictum from 1916. Wow. Long time ago. Well, there's a reason why he was the first ace of aces, so... There you go. You definitely know your history. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's wrap up this interview here. I appreciate your time, and, uh, Maybe next time we'll actually be able to get some chase camera footage of you taking out some pirates in the system or something similar to that. And I'd love to have you here again aboard oh, my sure. 90 Oh, sure. I'd be happy to. Uh, there's a production uh, under talks where we're going to have a space version of uh, Jesse James's game. So maybe you can... Uh, watch the, some of the raw footage of that someday. That'd be fantastic. All right, everybody. So that is our interview with uh, Gongzo, and uh, you know a little bit more about him now, and uh, he is a, one of the most renowned fighter pilots in the Stanton system, and uh, we thank you, and 
Now back to the action of the rest of the video. Thank you. 
deserve that. So that actually wraps up the video here. I uh, hope you like the little bonus of the wildfire. As we make our way into Lorville, after a fun-filled night of dogfighting, we got some credits to spend over at the bar. Might run into that guy Miles again. Who knows? But this is uh, Fist25 signing off and Hoping you have a great time out there in the verse, flying around in the Hornet. Please uh, like and subscribe to this channel. It just helps me make more videos. And uh, I'd like to know what you own. Do you own a Hornet? What do you think of it? Do you own the standard Hornet, the Super Hornet, the Wildfire like I'm flying here, the Ghost, the Tracker? What do you have? What are your thoughts? What do you think the best loadout is? Do you think this attrition loadout I have here on the wildfire with some tiger strikes was more effective than my first Hornet video? Link up above. Or do you think that the Super Hornet is going to be the way to play this aircraft in the future with two people? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to engage with the audience here. Next video, we're looking at the Anvil Arrow, and then possibly the Valkyrie after that, I believe. So please stay tuned, and uh, good night, Stan.